Gagan Mahindra MP. Thank you, Chairman. Um, can I, just for the record, declare that I am a councillor in place uh, referred to during the course of the session. Um, welcome, Permanent Secretary. My question is to do with the current crisis. Uh, just lean, I... Mr Mahindra, could you just lean into your microphone because well, you're breaking up a little bit. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Uh, my question is to the Permanent Secretary. Uh, during the current crisis, what are your priorities for ensuring that water supply is available and reliable across the country. Uh, you will be aware that colleagues are experiencing water accounts uh, as of today. Tamara, didn't, qu didn't quite catch the end, but um, I mean, uh, water and water supply uh, was one of our kind of you know, key priority areas as soon as the crisis hit. Food and water are our critical national infrastructure uh, responsibilities. So we have been very actively engaging uh, with the water companies, with the regulators through the crisis, that the, in particular, the immediate concern was around um, was um, around uh, absences and uh, levels of absences, uh, but that actually has has steadied and stabilised. Access to PPE, we engage very much with them, and therefore uh, in the sort of central effort um, around uh, around PPE access and of assuring ourselves that we could deal. Um, you know, with with um, uh, any issues that arose and do so using um, social distancing. And we have been able to do that and manage in the situation that you refer to. So those were our, our priorities to assure ourselves of our ability uh, to do that and to have contingencies in place if, uh, if situation worsened and if it was uh, more challenging for uh, the companies to operate. Uh, my next question is uh, to Sir James. Um, obviously, the water companies are under a lot of pressure during this pandemic. How are you ensuring standards are maintained? Well, thank you. Uh, we've been, uh, as Tamara says, we've been in regular uh, daily touch with all the uh, water companies that we regulate to uh, seek to understand whether they have any logistical or practical uh, or other problems, um, both in terms of continuing to produce clean drinking water and in terms of uh, continuing to treat uh, sewage. Um, uh, in order to help them, uh, we have produced a number of what we call regulatory position statements, which uh, allow uh, a company in uh, particular circumstances uh, not to have to give effect to all the normal regulatory requirements that we would impose on them. And we've done that uh, for a range of uh, sectors that we regulate, including the water sector. Um, uh, most of the position statements that we've taken in relation to the water sector uh, are about um, how they should manage in the event of non-availability of some staff, uh, how they would manage in the event of non-availability of some uh, essential chemicals. Uh, in practice, um, uh, we haven't seen um, uh, those uh, water companies needing to take up uh, the extra uh, flexibility that we've given them so far. So far, they've been able to manage uh, relatively well with relatively few problems. But as I say, we're in daily touch with them. And uh, if they do need that flexibility, uh, we'll make sure that they have it. Thank you. And finally, for me, um, Mrs. Fletcher, uh, question about how are you ensuring that water companies are treating. Could you just, sorry, Mr. Mahindra, could you please lean into your microphone because it's, it's just a bit unstable. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Fletcher, how are you ensuring that water companies are treating their customers fairly during this pandemic? You know, very early on in the pandemic, we wrote to the water companies. Sorry, Ms. Fletcher, apologies. We seem to have been challenges with sound today. Could you also lean in a little to your microphone? It's just a bit echoey and difficult to hear. Thank you. Is that better? That's a bit better. Thank you. Great. Very, very early on, we wrote to the water companies asking them to do everything they could uh, to help customers, especially those that were struggling to pay their water bills at this time. Um, and I'm very pleased to say that the companies actually collectively took very swift action to introduce payment holidays and to have really good communications in place so that customers were aware what support was available to them. Uh, we also took action uh, to make sure that business customers um, who'd had to close their premises uh, during the crisis uh, were not being formally chased to pay their bills um, and we were also taking uh, steps then, of course, to make sure that the uh, business water retailers uh, were able to stay afloat financially as well. Uh, so there's been quite a lot done on that front. And I'm pleased to say that a number of customers are getting good support at this time, 
in terms of payment holidays. And there's some thought now as to uh, how many uh, customers could be supported, additional customers could be supported with social tariffs. Mr Mahindra. Thank you for that. Um, my, one other question, Mrs Fletcher, is... Oh, actually, I'll come back to it, Chairman. Later on. So going back to Gagan Mahindra. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Mrs. Fletcher, Mrs. Fletcher, just off the back of um, Sir Geoffrey's question, um, you said the 500 million um, for... for so 500,000, was it half a million? I think, Mrs. Fletcher, was it? Half Sorry, million, I missed... 500,000, yeah. Has that been um, guaranteed? Yes, and that is part of the um, allowed revenues that the companies um, are allowed to collect from their customers. Uh, and that money, um, I think, is that we've now got nearly 20 potential uh, strategic investment schemes, um, which will either be transferring uh, water around uh, and from dry areas of the country, um, in, uh, from wet areas, sorry, into drier areas of the country, um, or providing new reservoirs and even looking at desalination. So there's a range of options here. Um, and that money, uh, 469 million, is going to be used uh, to help understand which of those projects should start construction from 2025 onwards. But can I just be clear on the, on the, the figures? Because I think I misheard through the sound quality. So we're talking in the millions, not the, not the hundred thousands. That's, that's, that's right. That makes more sense. I think it wasn't really much money to do all of that. Uh, Mr Mahindra. So the 469 million, is that ring-fenced? Are the companies allowed to use that for other purposes beyond... Is it ring-fenced, is the question, Ms Fletcher? Yes, yes, it, it, is, it is specifically um, to investigate those uh, strategic resource schemes. Okay. And um, so Geoffrey also asked about whether water companies could increase their charges if their customers wanted them to, if it was going to be directly... Um, money in for infrastructure. Is that something of what's looked at? So what is it? Sorry, did you hear the end of that question, Ms. Fletcher? Yeah. Uh, not quite. Oh, could uh, you repeat, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Hendry, you're fading in and out for some reason. Do you uh, think you just repeat the question slowly? Thank you. Sorry about this. Um, so my question is to do with water companies looking to increase charges that they believe their customers are happy to on the basis that additional money is spent on infrastructure. Does Ofwat have a view? And if so, what is it? Yes. Sure. So, so thank you, Chair. As part of um, setting the allowed revenues that companies can collect from their customers over the last five years, we looked at customer research and indeed where customers gave strong support um, above and beyond what is required by statute for the companies to invest in. If, if that support was um, well-founded and, and properly researched, um, then absolutely we allow additional investment in those circumstances. But I would add, um, we, we do not at that point abrogate our responsibility to test that what is being put forward is an efficient level of investment. Um, so I don't think any customer would want the company uh, to spend more than is necessary to deliver a scheme efficiently. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on, my question is to Tamar Filkenstein about the public estate. Um, water companies will rightly ask why we are not getting our own house in order. Uh, what work has been have you undertaken to ensure the public estate, like hospitals or schools, have efficient water usage? Ms. Finkelstein. Um, so the, I mean, the, the public estate is part of the kind of non-household, uh, about non-household businesses, and we um, are, look to uh, the retailers um, and the, the, the wholesalers to, to work with them um, around how they can drive uh, better efficiency. So they are part of what we are um, asking uh, the water companies working through the retailers to work uh, with the public estate to um, to encourage greater efficiency, um, so that they're, they're part of that, and we're you know, looking to improve uh, efficiency uh, in that way. So that's that's the main way in which we're doing that work. Do we need to build on that, similar to what um, energy consumption is like today, where it's signposted what particular products are efficient and which ones aren't, 
do you see that as being the direction of travel? Yeah, I mean, you know, it is very much, um, um, you know, most of the, the public say will be uh, metered and uh, will be looking to, uh, you know, to save money and therefore drive greater efficiency uh, in that way and will be in their, uh, in their interest. I don't know if Sally Randall might want to come in with a bit more information on this. Sally Randall, department. Yeah, just to pick up the point specifically, I think you were getting up labelling which obviously makes all consumers of water whether it's households or businesses or schools or hospitals it makes it easier for them to choose products which are going to use less water and uh, we consulted in July on a range of options which we think will help people to use less water and make it easier to use less water including options on labelling and also on building regulations and how those might work together so that people when using and build when living in buildings or operating in buildings have all the tools available to reduce water and we think that's a really important part of the package alongside the messaging so as long as exhorting people to use less water it makes it much more possible if we make progress on those and we consulted on those options in July and the government will hope to respond to that consultation quite soon. Thank you. Mr Mahindra. Uh, just finally thank you Chairman. Are we looking at things like planning regulations to make sure that um, we are building efficient buildings for tomorrow, not just about energy, but also about water supply. Uh, Sally, I don't know whether you want to answer that. Yeah, if I could come in on that. In the same consultation that I just described, also um, set out some options for how we might take forward building regulations, where at the moment there is a, a national standard for all homes and local authorities have the option to require a higher standard, which they might do in a more water stressed area. And we explored some options in that consultation for making that tougher standard national or other options for um, upping our game on building regulations so that water efficiency is built in from the outset. Alongside product labelling, that is really important that the two go together. And so we're considering the responses to that consultation now where we ask people for the evidence on what would be most effective. And finally, if I may, Chairman, when are we expecting to hear about the results of those consultations and whether they've been implemented? Ms Randall? So we would expect to do those uh, relatively soon. We consulted in July. Obviously, we weren't able to uh, respond to that consultation as quickly as we might have liked because of the focus on coronavirus at the moment. But we are turning our attention back to uh, that business now and we hope to do so quite soon. So is that later this month or is that the I don't know if we could be that specific, but it's certainly high up our agenda now. Okay, well, we can we can log that to remind you, but it'll be helpful if you told us uh, when you know when the likely time scale is, and that especially if it's while we're drafting our report, it'll be helpful to know that. We will do. Uh, we will. Thank you very much. I'm going to get Mr. Mahindra, you finished now? I am. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask.